Kim and Polly. Polly. And we're going to just look at another word that we, um, or words that we grapple mm. with. Acceptance and giving up. Giving up. And surrender sometimes gets mm. muddled up with acceptance, doesn't it? So, um, we, the words are important. They are, and they can be, they can make, get you, you know, in a real mess because they can be used quite harshly. I mean, anyone can be accused of giving up. We're never accused of acceptance. <laughs> you've accepted this. I mean, that doesn't happen. But you've given up. I've had that said to me. Oh, right. Yeah. Because I've decided, yeah, looking at everything, feeling everything and exploring everything, that for me, a particular course of action, which rejects something else is the right course and I've accepted that that's the place I'm in and I'm accepting the consequences mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of not doing the right. thing that I'm being asked to do so you've got an equanimity or yes. a, a responsibility and equanimity with the decision yeah you've made which is very different to giving up is like you've one is a, to my mind giving up is like you know you've even abandoned engaging with something yes you're abdicating responsibility abdicating and run, again running away I mean I don't want to know yes I don't want to know. So I'm not going to think about it or engage with it on any level so it's quite in, so why we like grappling with these words because we, we're interested in that place where one is taking um, active responsibility and being you know this, this word that gets overused I think empowered there must be another word a better word I think um you know, shouldering one's own burdens, being an adult. Yeah. So, so I think taking responsibility is is pretty good, actually. It it describes or accepting where you're at, because I think mm. often we use this word acceptance <clears throat> and surrender when we're talking about people who are um, critically ill, i.e., dying. Yeah. yeah. But there's a place. There's a, there can be a very t- um, exquisite place mm. of acceptance because they've come into some internal in, in, in internal deep peace with knowing where they're at yeah which is different to oh they've just given up and collapsed in a heap and uh, are not engaged mm. you know are not engaged with the fact that they're actually dying so they're two very different states of being to our way of they, they are very different. I think, again, the nuances of the language make it hard for somebody in those positions to communicate any of that, to be able to share with other people mm. that they have found that peace, mm. equanimity. It doesn't mean that they're not ever going to take a treatment, that they're not going to be positive. Oh, that's a new one. Oh, yeah, yeah you've had that to um, the list. You've had that to the list, yes. That they're not, that they are, they're not just turning their face to the wall and denying everything that's going on it's not running away actually and it's it also engaging not running yeah, away yes and it, and it doesn't mean because they've accepted where they're at doesn't mean they're going to ha- not have days or moments of mm. being despairing or angry yeah. or upset or um yeah i think it's uh, so i think what we're kind of what we're interested in is when we're really engaging with another human being that we don't loads a whole load of assumptions mm. on someone just by a very quick statement okay we use words don't we often as a quick nav- navigational yeah. tool and that's fine as if you're walking down the street you know how are you today Polly? oh i'm fine i'm just going to go and get my parking ticket or whatever it is yeah. I mean, that that's that's fine to yeah. have that those exchanges but when we're really doing that we're you know, exploring deeper stuff, meaningful things, yeah. things that we feel and happen to us in our in the, in the biggest side of our lives, mm. not the trivia, mm. the things that are really mm. important in our lives, mm. and it, it, and using the language so that other people understand you. I mean, it is a tool, language mm. of communication. But what we've noticed, one of the reasons we have our little rants uh, about some of the words, is they're used in such a way as to deny the, the flow of communication. It's like, I don't want to understand you, so if I use this term, I can switch you off mm. and not have to engage with this. And I think that's... The, that's it's a, almost like a kind of an easy way of... 
a, a dropping out of real communication. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes it's used because people don't have the language. Well, I think uh, offering people new language is also yeah. uh, really important. The ways of talking about something. Yeah. So the the importance is, you know, because we grow we grow in these places, don't we? Otherwise, mm. we get stultified. And I was just thinking that how the reasons why my, my why someone might come and work with you or work with me is because the the space given to explore, and I think a lot of the pain mm. of maybe when someone's dealing. Uh, you know, it's gone off into a hospital or a hospice, and they're trying to meet, you know meet another fellow pe- p- person, the practitioner, or, um, in these places. And when the language gets clumsy, mm. and someone's, you know, wanting to needing to be met, yes, and it's it's just sort of swept away. In we've ticked that box, we've used that phrase, we can now disengage and move on, and it. And actually, we wanted to come into actually that more big, complicated, messy human arena, and not be frightened about giving giving ear and giving voice, giving voice. Yeah, yeah. To to the fact that things are difficult, messy, scary, and not manageable sometimes. You know, things are too big to manage. Yeah, and, and they make us very uh, desperate. And we need other people for that. That's when the the, the listening ear, the compassionate heart, mm. and the power. I think it's the power. Then that you and I also talk about with the kind of characters, and maybe you are listening. That if something's actually named, mm. it it actually frees it frees things up, it and it, it it's less scary, and it allows some movement, and sometimes just the naming of something. Or you just like we are, just kind of grapple mm. with it. It's much more useful than that quick slap a label on it, and then just then people just bounce back into that place of what I call. I think that's the thing. It's that shutting down all the mm. time, isn't it? We found so many of these words, and there will be more. Well, they're used in order to shut down the dialogue and the communication. Mm. We've tidied it up. We've put a label on it, and now we can pull back. And it's. I think we're exploring the willingness um, to look at some of the mess. So maybe um, if people have got some words, if there, anyone's out there listening and you've got a word you want to ping our way that we might have a view on, feel very free to put it down in the in the yeah, comments and we'll, and we'll have a go because it's all the alch- alchemy yeah. of um, conversation, which is great. And when we talk about it tomorrow, we might be slightly different. Yes, because we're random human <laughs> beings. <laughs> So uh, thanks for listening again and um, see you again. Thank you.